Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing. Thank you for joining me today, back again. Just to answer the, all the comments I got on the last video, that was all about the so many questions tag. I had a lot of fun laughing at all your guesses about the truths and the lies. And you know, some of you guessed and some of you didn't. And let's say that the lie was the bungee jumping. <laughs> I would never do that. Maybe I would have done that when I was single and I wasn't a mum. But since I've been a mother, those type of risky things, no, then, then really not for me. Okay, let's get on with it. Now, last week I showed you one of my Sybil skirts from the Sybil skirt collection from Love Notions, the red pencil skirt with a zipper on the center. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a picture here and you can go back and look there. Now that red ponty, I had saved it for a jacket. That's what the ponty was for. I bought the ponty in Chile. I've looked for ponty here, very hard to find. I only find, I found some in green and black. Yeah, I have green and black that I've bought here, but I've never seen red. So when I saw it in red in the summer, I snatched it up. I didn't have much at all, like one and a half meters. And I used part of that for the skirt. And what I had left was not much. I was a bit, you know, annoyed that I'd, I'd used just a piece of that fabric for the skirt. And now I had just had this random amount that I didn't know what I was gonna use it for. So this is a spur of the moment make, something I'm gonna wear loads. It's red, I love it. And recently, Ali Olsen, who's the owner of Indie Soul, she released one of her patterns under her name and that pattern is called Monarch Jacket. And it's a really nice, uh, neat, boxy style, raglan sleeve, bomber type jacket with big long cuffs, a big band at the bottom, snaps on the front, sort of relaxed, fits, sporty looking jacket. When she just released this pattern, I got a newsletter and there was a 20% discount, I think, uh, on the release week. So I grabbed that pattern way back when she released it. Now having this fabric was a perfect project because this project doesn't take much fabric. And the way I placed all my patterns and having a solid, you know, I had to, didn't have to match any prints or stripes, you know, it didn't take up much fabric at all. This pattern is designed to be made with medium to heavyweight knit fabric like scuba or ponty with 20% stretch for the main body of the jacket. Now the collar, they recommend a fabric that has at least 40% stretch. And that is because the collar is smaller than the neck and you need to stretch it out to match, you know, the pattern. So you need to have it stretch at least that amount. The sizing for this pattern comes from size zero to 18 US. And that is a bust of 32 to 43 and a half inches and hips of 35 to 46 and a half inches. Now it is a roomy jacket. There is about six inches of positive ease around the bust, 11 at the waist because it's a boxy style. The positive ease around the hips is not that much, one and three eighths, but this is in relation to your full hip and the jacket doesn't reach the full hip, it reaches the high hip. So, you know, you've got to consider these measurements to choose a size. I chose a straight size 14 according to my measurements. The pattern's drafted for a height of five foot six. I'm taller than that. Like in theory, I know I should have lengthened this by an inch. I've heard this rule and I do try to apply it with good results, is that for the height the pattern is drafted for, whatever difference in height you have, either shorter or taller, for every inch of difference, you adjust half an inch. So because there's a two inch difference between the drafted height to my height, it's two inch difference, I should have lengthened an inch. And I really tried to do that. <laughs> I did my best with the pattern placement on my fabric. But as I mentioned before, I was working with like the bare minimum. So I had to make it just as is. So if you look at the feet at the end of the video and you think it's a bit shorter, it is because it is a bit shorter than what it should be. <laughs> What you're going to see in Up Close and So Personal is first how I check for stretch on fabric. Usually patterns have a stretch guide, you can print out stretch guide sheets. There's lots and lots of ways that you can check for stretch on your knit fabric. I decided to make my method standard, so I check mine every time the same way. I use my cutting mat to measure the distance. And that way I've got one single method stuck in my brain that I use and I don't forget and I know exactly in a few seconds how much my fabric is going to stretch. So you're going to see that. 
Also, I have lined this jacket. It's not lined in the original pattern, but I decided to line it because why not? <laughs> I think anything that's lined, especially a jacket, just feels and looks so much better. It's more like lashes. I don't know, I just really like it. So I have lined it and I'm gonna show you how I did that. And yeah, that's it. It was a very simple make, very simple make. I just made it a, a few more steps, you know, a few extra steps with the lining, but otherwise it's a beginner friendly pattern. So let's hop into that. Don't you think this is starting to wear? I'm going to show you how I determine the percentage of stretch in a knit. So just to make it standard for any fabric I want to test, I use five inches as a guide. So on the corner of my cutting mat there is zero and there is five inches. And I stretch taking 10 inches as the 100% stretch reference. So if my knit can stretch out one more inch from the five, that means I've got a 20% stretch. If it can stretch two more inches, it'll be 40, 60, 80, 200. A fabric that has 100% stretch means that being 5 inches in this little piece, if I stretch it out to 10, it means it can stretch 100% of the 5 inches, you know, to make it 100% stretch. I don't actually work with fabrics like that. <laughs> so, I have a piece of the red ponty I'm using in this jacket. You can see a chalk mark here that will match the zero there and it reaches 5 inches right there. So I have five inches of fabric in this space. I'm gently gonna stretch it, holding this down on the zero so it doesn't move, just slightly, and this can comfortably stretch up to 40%. If I wanted to make it stretch 100, there's no way. I could force it to 60, I don't want to do that. So I would say this fabric is comfortably between 40 and 50% stretch. Now there are other ponties and other thicker knits that will just stretch up to 20 but this one 40 to 50 and that is what I'm going to call the stretch of this fabric. The Monarch jacket has three optional collar pieces and they all have to do with the percentage of stretch of the fabric you're using to make the collar. If you're using a ribbing or a specialized fabric for the collar that has 80 to 100% stretch, the collar piece will be shorter. If you're using another knit that you measure has only 60 to 80%, it's a little bit longer. And now if you're using a fabric that has less stretch even, the collar is longer, 40 to 60% stretch. I have tested the stretch of my red ponty as you already saw and determined my stretch was between 40 and 60% on the fabric. So this is the collar piece that I'm using, it's the longest piece. Here's my collar, now I didn't have enough fabric to be able to cut the collar in its full length you know <laughs> so I have a cheating little seam there in the middle but hey no one's gonna see it and the jacket is still gonna be amazing so this is the collar piece I have chosen uh, according to the stretch percentage of my red ponty these are all the pattern pieces for my jacket it's very simple I am sure this will not take a long time to sew here are the two front pieces now the front center piece there has you put interfacing there and I actually have red knee interfacing so I've done that on both and I've already pressed them in so those are those two are ready to be worked on the back piece is cut on the fold there is a bottom band that is quite quite thick like once you fold it so it will add to the length of the jacket and then we have raglan sleeves with cuffs as well pretty long cuffs that will go on the bottom of the sleeve and the collar piece there that, as you saw, I had to cut with a seam in the middle because there was no other way. This is the normal front pattern piece and I'm going to show you how I get to a lining piece. So this one has you fold in and that acts like the facing of the jacket. So you're going to have red and just red coming over here. This is the interface part there. So where this is going to be folded, I've drawn a line there. And this there, I'm going to add 3 eighths of an inch for seam allowance. So I'm just going to fold that like this. And this is going to be my lining piece. When I sew the lining piece to there, 
I'm gonna have one full piece. It's gonna complete this area there. The black thing that you're seeing on top is the lining. I've decided at last minute to line it because why not? But I'm just lining the sleeves partially. As you can see, there's a short sleeve. Now, the front pattern piece is shorter because it's going to be sewn onto the part that is folded there. This part there. So when I sew that with a 3 8 seam allowance, I'm going to have a complete front piece. And I'm going to construct this um, having the collar sandwiched between the jacket and the lining so everything will be really nice and clean from up here and everywhere it's gonna it's gonna look nicer i have both layers of my jacket my mane and my lining right sides together there and i've pinned my jacket to the lining i'm gonna sew that 3 8 seam allowance once i've sewn that this fold bit is uh, where i'm going to match these seams here with the sleeve and in here the collar is going to reach up to there and the collar is going to be sandwiched in there between these two so I'm going to sew that seam put the collar in there now I have to stretch out the collar to match this and then once I've done that I'm going to pin all the way up the top here is my lining this is the wrong side up here as you can see the seam on the shoulders there and the wrong side of the jacket so jacket is right sides together with the lining and in between is the collar there and so you see it's all like gathered and stuff and it's because I had to stretch out the collar to fit in here this is where the original like facing type thing would fold there and the lining is attached 3 8 seam allowance and the collar reaches up to there so when I flip this right side out, this is where my collar is going to start, right at that corner there. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew this. I've got the whole jacket inside out, lining, main, wrong sides facing up, what you can see. And the collar is in there. I have clipped into the curves there so it can turn nicely. So the whole jacket is opened up like that. And you can see that on one of the side seams of the lining I have an opening and this is how I've turned the whole jacket to be inside out and at the bottom here I have the bottom band under there so if you look inside here there's the band and I have sandwiched it in between the lining and the jacket and here's a little piece that folds over this way you can see that it attaches to the lining there so I have already sewn that, 3 8 seam allowance. So what I'm going to do from this little opening here, I'm going to bring the jacket out. Bag it out basically. Okay, so now I have a jacket that is finished super clean. You can see that this band is tucked into there all very cleanly finished inside see on the top the collar is very neat here's that center seam that I had to do no one's gonna know it's gonna be behind my neck where all my hair is sleeves with the big long cuffs and remember I just did a partial lining of the sleeve so it's just like a short lining it reaches like half the sleeve and that's just loose in there so now here the pattern has you put snaps I don't have snaps or will any future because I don't have those tools so I'm just gonna put buttonholes and buttons okay so here's my red jacket I really like it uh, look at the collar there sandwiched between the lining and the main fabric now true story these bits here were a little bit tricky to sew just these areas around there and I am not kidding you I am picked and re-sewed about three or four times on each side to get it like how I wanted it <laughs> I would totally do it even ten times if I had to to get it perfect because this is such a visible area like all these neck collars and things on clothes people look at your face and what is right under your face your collar and if it's not like if it's wonky or dodgy it's gonna 
title tale that is handmade and I want my clothes to look like professional, like awesome. So yeah, if that takes 10 times to try again, I will gladly do that. And there is that cheeky little seam in the center of my collar. There was no other way I could have gotten my collar piece and no one's gonna see it. It's where my hair is. <laughs> <laughs> I top stitched uh, the raglan sleeves as you can see more for a decorative aspect I think they look cool that way everywhere is top stitched the back as well cuffs the band now the way I did the band is really clean it's all inside you saw how I did that and actually I just finished sewing this jacket like literally like half an hour ago I haven't hand sewn this <laughs> So this is the opening on the side seam of the, of the lining and this is where I bagged the jacket out. So yeah, I've got to go uh, close that by hand, just invisibly, you know. So I'm just going to pop it on so you can see. Here you can see up close how it looks, how good the collar lies, nice and flat. And that's because I chose the right collar. Had I chosen one of the shorter ones, uh, I would have had like puckers and like, you know. So I think it's genius that she provides three options for the collar depending on what you're using if you're using ribbing then you can use a, a shorter piece you know fit around the shoulders is really nice with a raglan sleeve i think it's a really really nice finish here at the top now towards the back you can see where it hits i know i could have used with an extra inch of length but hey i didn't have more fabric how it looks at the back it's nice and boxy this is supposed to have snaps I don't have those tools I don't see myself having any anytime soon so button holes buttons I love it when my jackets are like this inside so neat so clean I absolutely love doing these two jackets like the jacket I like the pattern the instructions were super mega clear lots of really well-made diagrams for me diagrams are gold I actually look at the diagrams more than Ali rates this pattern for a confident beginner and I would agree now if you want to line it then I would say intermediate not because lining is hard you just need a little bit more dedication that's all not because of the difficulty level but because of the extra time extra steps and dedication motivation as well <laughs> so yeah i highly recommend these patterns a very very nice make and if you like the sporty things i mean you can color block and make the sleeves a different color you can use that really cool ribbing with stripes and i love that look on everyone else but i just can't dress myself that way you know <laughs> just not that sporty thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share please click on that bell so you don't miss a sewing tip Thanks for watching. Bye and happy sewing.